nearby will increase the demand by a further quarter of a million cubic meters. To create areas that could be flooded should the need arise and to get at the coal beneath the river, it had to be diverted to the site's western side, eventually to be moved once again back to its final position to become part of the lake and surrounding ponds. The temporary riverbed from north to south, 2,300 meters long, followed a shorter course than the original river. Its gradient is steeper and the water flow greater. So, in each half, here at the southern end, weirs, spillways and new drainage structures had to be installed, so that at all times one half of the site was available for flood water storage, while the other could be mined. In the early autumn of 1977, the new river bed, with the railway embankment just to the west, was ready. The job of diverting the river could begin. An important event this, for no mining of real consequence could take place until the river had been successfully diverted, and the flood plain, just south of the Bund, had been made secure. In the south, the plug the barrier between river and diversion was removed. With the railway on its left, the diversion slowly took the place of the original river. And now, to the south. By October 1977, the old riverbed was empty. The real job of mining could begin. The mill had to remain so mining operations had to move carefully around the site, moving from north to south, towards and then past the mill. An operation of this size needs many machines, face shovels, dump trucks, scrapers and graders. During the six years of mining operations, the 150 men or so who worked on the site moved nearly three quarters of a million cubic meters of topsoil, one and a quarter million cubic meters of subsoil, 23 million tons of overburden, and finally, one and a half million tons of coal. To comply with the constraints of the site, especially its continuing function as a floodplain, the order of operations had to be planned and carried out with special care. First came the diversion of the river and the construction of weirs and regulators in the northern half. Meanwhile, an area just south of the mill and bund was excavated for use as flood water storage. Then, while river diversion work continued, the northern half of the site was mined. Recontouring was started in the north as coaling was completed there. The river was diverted the lake bed prepared and the bund removed. Finally, the southern end of the site was excavated, mined and recontoured. Dust suppression on every open cast site is a vital and necessary activity. And water is the chief agent. These water carriers hold 10,000 gallons. Refilled 10 times, each dust suppression unit can put down 100,000 gallons every day. The huge quantities of overburden moved and stored during mining operations, as well as the material excavated to construct the temporary riverbed, the lake and its associated ponds, were laid down to create the hills and slopes that will become part of the recreation area, and the she slope. Subsoil and then topsoil carefully stored and tended for just this purpose, were replaced. The slopes were leveled and contoured to the required shapes. Then, before being sown with ryegrass to improve the soil structure, the soil was rooted and aerated. With mining operations in full spate in the south, to the north, work went on to screen the coke works and the nearby colliery. It wasn't long before the first green reappeared. Snow fell in February 1978. 
But despite the adverse weather conditions, work continued. Just south of Bedgrave Mill, 1,500 cubic meters of material were being removed every hour from a series of bench cuts. Spring, and at the northern end, very little evidence that only a year ago, coal was being won. Edward Mallander, 86 years old and a keen gardener, was always interested in the site's transformation. Amongst his visitors was Peter Latham of Shands, who, like many others, appreciated this neighbour's interest. On the 9th of June 1978, when the site was in full production, 40 members of the Country Park's Joint Committee visited the site. There was much to see. The whole site lay spread before them. Here is the visible evidence of the joint work and cooperation between the National Coal Board's Open Cast Executive and its contractors and the joint local authorities. South Yorkshire County Council, Derbyshire County Council, the City of Sheffield, the Metropolitan Borough of Rotherham and the District of North East Derbyshire, as well as a number of public utilities. To the south, Killamarsh is on the horizon. Along the railway, running north to south. To the northeast, the restored slopes. The mill in the centre, and to the north, the coke works in the distance. Westwards, the railway. Now south again, Killamarsh, and the circuit is complete. A transformation in the making, made possible by coal, the riches that lie under this land. The rich Kilnhurst seam yields its treasures, now well down in the south. The coal seams, the top hard, the high hazel and the Kilnhurst, dip from west to east. Relatively near the surface in the west, at about 8 metres down, the deepest excavations in the east were 46 metres deep. There's no denying that while excavation is in progress, an open cast site is not a pretty place. But all possible care is always taken to minimise its effects on the community. Baffle banks are constructed on the boundaries and trees are planted to screen the workings. Before loading, the coal is cleaned. Here, as everywhere else on the site, the coal was brushed to remove overburdened debris. Trimming the load ensures equal weight distribution, for safety and to avoid spillage on the public highway. Safety at work is of course of paramount importance. For years it's been obligatory to wear helmets on a cobalt site. Each lorry's wheels and body are washed and often when long journeys are involved, the load is sheeted. And then it's off for its 10 mile journey to one of the board's coal preparation plants, where the coal will be crushed and graded for the nearby power stations. As on every coal board open cast site, a liaison committee was formed. Meeting regularly with the coal board site engineer, Peter Creswell, in attendance, local residents and councillors were kept in touch with developments. New equipment and modifications were constantly developed in the interest of both efficient coal production and of environmental control. Noise reduction kits were fitted to dump trucks and new, much less noisy compressor units developed as well as dust suppression equipment. 